Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. It is Wednesday, the 17th of May, in a beautiful day, but really hot today in Maryland. We are going to be meeting some army friends, a couple who used to live next to us when I lived in army housing here in the Washington DC area. And they have since moved up north to New Hampshire and are down here for an event with their son. And we're gonna to get to meet for dinner tonight awesome it's going to be great to see them as i am speaking i am printing right this minute some photographs from steve italiano who is the art of women photography from australia and also my very favorite photographer christine bilby photography christine herself sent me another beautiful image of a beautiful girl and i did a little bit of editing i hope she is not upset with me, but I think I did improve a tiny bit on her already super excellent image. So before I show you those, which will be in the next two videos, I have a stack of prints right here ready to go. These are from DP Review Challenge Gallery. And so again, a bunch of really interesting images and I put them to print just for fun just because I could. I have that 100 foot roll of enhanced matte paper. And by the way, I procrastinated a bit too long. It's gone. But luckily I found some 17 by 100 foot rolls of premium matte from Epson for the same price, $39. So I bought two rolls of that and it should be here in a week. So anyway, let's go ahead and begin with today's subject, which is something I have to just revisit occasionally over and over again, basically. The users want to know why is it necessary to do a standard print on your new printer? Shouldn't it have come standardized from the factory? Shouldn't it come certified from the factory? Shouldn't it come calibrated from the factory? Yeah, it should, but often than not, it is not tweaked for your own environment. In other words, for the paper you are using, for the inks that you are using, the batch. Even if it's Epson, each ink batch does change a tiny bit, regardless of what anyone tells you. Paper batches are exactly uh, the same situation they change slightly between each batch that the mill produces. So let's go ahead and revisit this again. You get your brand new printer and you're all glassy eyed because this gorgeous machine just showed up at your door. You set it up, you load the inks. If it's the type that needs to initialize, you let it do so. And then you run a nozzle check. That's the first thing you do. You wanna make sure that the charging of the printhead, the charging of the ink lines, the charging of the dampers that ride on top of your printhead, if it is one of those printers with stationary outboard mounted cartridges, has received enough ink to push out all of the air that it contained. At this point, you should have a perfect nozzle check. If you do not, run one cleaning cycle right off the bat and then check again by the first, probably one or two, possibly at the very worst, you should have a perfect nozzle check. One that indicates that all, 100% of all of your nozzles that that printhead contains, if it's an Epson printer, are firing. If it's a Canon high-end printer, there will be some redundant nozzles that are not being used, that are kept as spares as you burn out other nozzles during the printing process. Ooh, that seems really, really scary. But that's what happens with Canon printheads. They are thermal, and so each nozzle fires a droplet of ink via a mini explosion. And so it actually does erode the nozzle a tiny little bit every time it fires. So eventually those nozzles are replaced by those so-called redundant nozzles. And once you run out of redundant nozzles, the printhead is basically unusable and has to be replaced. But anyway, that's the price you pay for a printer that basically hardly ever clogs. All right, so you have 
run your nozzle check and it's not perfect. So what do you do next? You do a printhead alignment. And depending on your printer, the driver will drive you through the process. Some of them are visually done. In other words, you will look at patches and select the best one according to the criteria that the driver tells you during the instructions. Others are automatic and they will ask you to run your alignment on good paper, something along the lines of a glossy type photo paper or luster. Often that will be provided for you, the little tiny five sheet pack, that's what is meant for you to use it for, for those initial um, calibration type processes. And so by using a nice glossy paper or luster paper, the sensor can better read the results because there will not be any ink wicking caused by regular bond or copy paper. So you need to use some sort of coated paper for this process. That is run automatically. If that's the case, it will automatically make adjustments and then you are done. It will declare the head aligned and you are ready to print. So the first thing normally people will do is to load one of their images, edit it, and print it. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Go to your editor, load a standard image, and I will give you the link again so that you can download my pack of standardized images. What are standard images? These are images that have no bias to them at all. They have not been touched by you, me, or anyone else that has an uncalibrated system. These images are perfect. They are standards. They are the baseline by which you will judge your printer ability to reproduce correct color and neutrality, as well as linear neutrality. So you will print one of these images and then you will visually look at it. In fact, when you load it in your monitor, don't worry about what it looks like. Just print it and you will print it, letting the driver control color. So in the case of Epson, you will probably use Epson standard sRGB as the color mode. You will then choose your paper type. You will then choose your quality. And I suggest you use the highest quality for this test. Then you will visually look at the print as it emerges. What lighting should you use? Something bright and something along the color temperature of daylight. Nothing too red, nothing too blue. That will impart a bias to the way you perceive that image. So look at your image. There's going to be pictures of little kids. Look at the skin tones. Do they appear correct? Are there any nonlinear neutral problems along the shadow areas of the face? Sometimes you will see a slight bluish tone to the shadows and a warm tone to the lit areas of the baby's faces, these little kids. Then you will look at your black to white ramp. It's a neutral throughout. Can you discern the deepest black and the next deepest black and so on all the way up to white does it change tone. Theoretically, you should have a nice neutral ramp without any tonality changes. Theoretically, you should have everything. The strawberries should look red. The sky should look nice cyan blue and, and so on. You will have lots of different sample images to be Examine and then you will determine with your own mind, your own set of eyeballs, does it look correct? If it looks as perfect as you imagine it, then you are set. That printer by itself with the minimal settings can reproduce a standard image correctly. At this point, then you worry about your monitor calibration. Now you're going to need to purchase a calibrator in my favorite brand is X-Rite. X-Ray has the beginner models, which is the Color Monkey range. You could get a Color Monkey display if you are never going to uh, foresee having to create custom profiles. Otherwise, the minimum unit you should buy is a Color Monkey photo. That will set you back $500, but it will be the best $500 you have ever spent. If you spend $1,000 for a printer, you need to calibrate your monitor. You bought a hell of a printer that needs to have a monitor that is calibrated to a standard that is the same as my monitor calibrated to the same standard, you see. So that will determine if what you are seeing on the monitor is correctly displayed by that monitor. 
To put it simply, if I load a middle gray tone, it should appear middle gray and neutral, not middle gray and some other tone. And often your eyes will fool you. Sometimes you have to actually put a neutral gray card next to it. Remember all photographers, a neutral gray card? You may have to want, you may have to use one of those, put it next to your monitor and see if there's any difference. Often than not, it will appear bluish on your monitor, which means that the white point color temperature is off, is wrong, it's too cold. So you have to recalibrate your monitor and choose a warmer color temperature until that gray patch on your monitor is reproduced to match the gray patch that you have in your standard gray card. So that's what you would use as a standard. Once that matches, then your monitor will be correctly displaying a gray, a neutrality type color. It's hard for me to put it into words, but you know what I mean. Something gray, uh, 250, 250, 250, 200, 200, 200, 125, 125, 125, you get the drift. All of those tones will have the same amount of red, green, and blue. So they should appear neutral on your screen. If they do not, then you have to adjust the white point. Then you run the color calibration. Basically, it's going to make sure that reds are correctly displayed, greens are correctly mistaken, and blues, and everything else in between. How many? About 16 million different shades of color. If you multiply 255 times the third power, you get over 16 million colors that that screen should be able to display even on 8-bit mode. So once you have that done, now you are sure that that monitor is going to take your image and whatever values that image contains will be displayed correctly, visually. So when you make a slight edit, it makes sense. If the picture is off to begin with, then you have to compensate for that off bias or color off balance look. And then you have actually ruined your image by shifting it away from maybe it was perfect. So now it's not because you had to shift it because your monitor wasn't displaying it correctly to begin with. All right, so that is the only time you need to have your monitor calibrated once you start to edit any of your own private images. It should be calibrated. Theoretically, if you have a monitor calibrated correctly, and I have my monitor calibrated to the same standards as yours, I could send you my image, and it will look perfect on mine, and it should look perfect on yours as well. So let's review. You receive your printer, you initiate it, you run a nozzle check, you align your print head, then you print your standard image, then you visually evaluate it under the correct lighting, then you calibrate your monitor. Do not go back to compare your print to the monitor unless the monitor is calibrated, okay? There's no point. Your monitor was uncalibrated when you originally loaded that image to print, the standard image. So it's not going to match at all. Now, once you calibrate your monitor, basically if you work backwards, what you are doing is you are matching your monitor to the printed result. That's what you are doing in theory, all right? So that is it. Once everything is nailed down, I just printed this stack right here. I press print. I loaded how many? I don't know how many. Eight, nine images and hit print. I had the correct ICC profile. I had the correct paper and I had the correct quality setting. I told the printer driver not to control color. I told my application to control color. I hit print. I walked away. Yum. Drank coffee for about half an hour, came back, and I had a sheet of maybe 15, 20 feet long piece of paper with all of my images printed. And guess what? They match my monitor. They match what I saw. What would be the point of editing if the two don't match? You see? What would be the point of mixing paint so that it visually looks correctly and then after you apply it to the wall and it dries it looks different how could you actually adjust that paint so that you get the final result you want it would be guesswork so that's why it's so important 
that once you begin to edit, and we all edit, you need to have your monitor correctly calibrated. Just because you say it's calibrated does not mean it is correctly calibrated. Read those instructions and watch lots of videos. It's not just me. There's lots of people that know a hell of a lot more than I do and have really excellent videos on color management on YouTube. Check those out. Study that. Learn the process and you will be able to print blindfolded. Well, you'll have to take your blindfold to edit. But once you get that nailed down, hit print, walk away, come back. There it is. Perfect. All right. Thank you again. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And until the next time, which will be tomorrow and tomorrow evening, I'll have two more videos following this. Happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.